The most characteristic property of Serve is its size. When we last saw Serve in 2020, it had become the world's smallest RISC-V CPU. But as it turned out, that was not the end of the road. A number of further optimizations have been discovered since then, making Serve even smaller. And who knows, perhaps there's more to be done. Serve isn't just looking to be the world's smallest RISC-V CPU, but hopefully also one of the most widely available. It accomplishes this by using the award-winning FUSOC package manager, which makes it easy to target new hardware. The Serve Reference SOC made its debut on the tiny FPGA BX board, which sports the Lattice IS40 FPGA, but today there exist official implementations for more than 30 different FPGA boards in all sizes. And since Serve is also a supported CPU in the Litex SOC builder tool, and by extension, the boards supported by Litex, the number of different FPGA boards running Serve is probably much higher. Now I know, there are some of you out there thinking, well, FPGAs are nice, but what about real chips? What about ASICs? While I could provide some rough estimates last year, there was no real way of providing accurate numbers without spending months of signing NDAs or spending tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars on ASIC implementation tools. Thankfully, this has changed since last year. Not least thanks to the OpenMPW project. So let's take a closer look at what that means for Serve. OpenMPW is a collaboration project to allow more people the chance to design their own ASIC. Skywater Foundries provides an open source 130 nanometer PDK. eFabless provides a fully open source ASIC toolchain called OpenLane. And Google provides funding to fabricate around 200 different chip designs, free of charge. Anyone can submit the designs on the condition that it is open source all the way to the GDS files. One of these designs is a simple Serve-based SOC called Subservant, making this the first known ASIC implementation of Serve. Using this toolchain in PDK, we see that the Subservant SOC occupies 0.01 square millimeters of the synthesis, or 0.04 square millimeters of the place and route. While the Skywater 130 nanometer PDK provides an open source production ready PDK, there's also the DARPA ASAP7 PDK, which provides an estimate of implementation sizes for a 7 nanometer FinFET node. Using this PDK, open source EDA expert Gatecat has estimated that Serve would use 94 square micrometers and could run at 2.4 gigahertz at 7 nanometers. We still need someone to pay for a 7 nanometer tape out though. Or maybe you mean these things when you talk about real chips. Well, you're still in luck. Prominent open source silicon developer Ravenslofty has created a plugin for the Yosis Synthesis tool that targets 7400 logic. Using this, we can see the serve can be implemented in 153 chips from the 7400 family for a total cost of 76 pounds. No one has yet tried to build it though. Porting doesn't only mean porting to new hardware targets. It's also mean running different types of software on the CPU. Serve supported Zephyr 1.14 at the time of launch, but the board support has now been updated to also support Zephyr 2.4. There is also an ongoing effort to run the NUTX RTOS on Serve, and most importantly, it can run the 1991 mega hit Another World. So far in simulation though, which means it's a tiny bit slower than on real hardware. To keep the implementation small, Serve uses software implementations for multiplication and division. But for workloads that require many of these operations, this can end up being too slow. To remedy this, there is ongoing work to add support for the M extension to Serve. This work is performed by Sishan Rafik as part of the Google Summer of Code. While multiplication can be done quite cheap, a division unit is large enough to rival the size of Serve. So, by implementing the multiplication and division logic as a separate MDU core external from Serve, we can plug in different versions of the multiplication and division logic with the most suitable speed size trade-off. This also allows several Serve instances to share one MDU to amortize the cost of the added logic over a number of cores. But the biggest improvement of Serve over the past year is perhaps not in code, but in documentation. 
Even though the source code is freely available and effectively only a few hundred lines long, Serve was written to be as small as possible, which has taken a toll on readability. For that reason, it is all the more important to have good documentation for understanding how the internal works. Over the past year, each source module has been documented, together with a block diagram, which for the most modules is accurate down to the gate level. Timing diagrams for important internal and external signal sequences are also added. Allow me to quote one of the greatest 20th century thinkers. A CPU is only as good as its software and ecosystem. In other words, we need to use the CPU for something. So let's take a look at some of the use cases. What Serve lacks for in computational capabilities, it can sometimes reclaim in quantity. The first example of this was the observer SOC, which is a heterogeneous sensor fusion SOC. Instead of using a large CPU to handle real-time communication with a large number of sensors, each sensor can instead use a dedicated Serve CPU for the control plane. While observer has a practical use case, its close relative core score has a whole different purpose. Core score is an award-giving benchmark for FPGAs and their EDA tools that works with the simple metric of how many serve cores you can fit into a certain device. While being a simple metric, it can still be helpful for new FPGA users to get a rough indication of how large the FPGAs are on some common FPGA boards. And since its introduction last year, a number of contributors have helped out submitting scores for the board at their disposal. These number ranges from the smallest FPGAs that can only fit a couple of cores up to the largest ones fitting more than 5,000 RISC V cores in a single FPGA. One result of SERV being so small is that all support infrastructure becomes very large in comparison. Even a 4 kilobyte SRAM can end up much larger than serve. Now you may think this means there is no point in serve being this small, but I say it's a matter of perspective. Your glass is half empty. My glass is half full. And here's why. Many chips contain several SRAM in different sizes for temporary buffers or for program and data storage. In particular, FPGAs tend to have SRAM scattered regularly over the chips. So, if we assume that the SRAM is something that is already there, then we can instead say that for a negligible cost, we can turn any SRAM into a small RISC-V computation unit, or a smart RAM. Or in other words, instead of adding an SRAM to serve, we add the serve to the SRAM. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the latest updates for serve and the many things you can do with it. And remember, it's open source, so you can try it right away if you want to. Thank you for your time.